Hello, I'm PJ Ketchmark and you're watching People in Perspective. Today our guest is Kit Ketchmark, the director of the Brookfield Historical Society. Thank you for joining us, Kit. Thank you. What does the director of the Brookfield Historical Society do exactly? Well, I'm the head of a 300-member volunteer organization here in town. Um, we maintain the, the old train station, as people call it. It's the Grossdale train station. Uh, we run the museum inside there. We have various history programs throughout the, the year and, and various events promoting local history and the preservation of things for, uh, you know, maintaining uh, um, things from yesterday for people of today. What, what is the exact history of the station? The, uh, the Grossdale station is the oldest standing building in Brookfield. It was built in 1889. Uh, it was built by the founder of Brookfield, Samuel Gross. Um, he built the station to serve uh, as a stop for people to get off in Brookfield, and he could sell real estate to them. Um, the building is listed on the National uh, Register of Historic Places, the only building in Brookfield to be so listed. Um, it was our operating train station up until 1981, when the railroad wanted to get rid of all these old stations, feeling they were obsolete and not needed. And uh, they were going to knock uh, the old stations down. They had already knocked down the Congress Park Station and the Hollywood Station. The Brookfield Station was next, and uh, the Brookfield Historical Society had gotten together um, to purchase the station for one dollar. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting, we have the, the bill of sale of when we had bought it from the, uh, the railroad. Uh, the station, uh, the, the society had scraped together the one dollar <laughs> to save the station. Um, at that time, it cost about uh, fifteen thousand dollars to to move the station. Um, after we had bought it, we had thirty days to move it to a Wait, different site. So you moved the building. We moved the building. Um, it was actually kind of interesting. Uh, like I said, it cost about fifteen thousand dollars back then. It was uh, put on the uh, the bed of a, a flatbed truck and uh, moved over to a site of where the old village hall was be uh, used to be, which is just across the creek from the new village hall. We do have a few pictures of the move. I said it was put on the back of a, a flatbed truck, uh, lifted up and basically rolled over. Uh, it took about eight to ten hours to move the station to its current site. The foundation had been, been ready uh, for it. Uh, as soon as it started to move, the chimney fell. But other than that, it, it sustained no damage throughout the move. Wow. Uh, it took several hours to make the turn coming over the railroad tracks because the station used to be next to the current operating train station. So it, was ac it actually came over the railroad tracks to its, its new spot north of the tracks. Um, it was a big event. There were hundreds of people watching it. People took off the, the day of school even <laughs> to come watch it be moved. Um, the only problem was that we had to work around the, uh, the schedule of the Amtrak station, uh, train uh, because they wouldn't change their schedule. So all the electric lines were brought down, uh, uh, all the, pass or the freight trains and passenger trains were stopped. As soon as that Amtrak train went by, the station was ready to cross the, the, the railroad tracks. That's cool. What else exactly do you do as a director? Well, part of Part of our, our job over there is, is maintaining history in Brookfield. We do have the, the station we take care of, which has been a tremendous amount of work over the last uh, 30 years. Um, aside from the cost of the $15,000 to move it, there's been almost $150,000 put into renovating it and restoring it. We're trying to you know, maintain that look of when it was built in 1889. Uh, we do operate a museum inside there. Uh, the upstairs is a living quarters. There used to be a station master that would live up there up until about the 50s. Uh, the station master was kind of the manager of the train station and he would run the train station. So the upstairs is set up as a, a living quarters for that person. Uh, we run various programs throughout the year on, on history. We've had programs on uh, you know, local Indian tribes and uh, uh, gangsters in the area. We even had a program one time on uh, whether or not the station was haunted. And we had some ghost hunters come in and uh, set up their uh, um, various equipment and they spent the night. And uh, after the night was done, they gave us the good news we weren't haunted. Um, well, that's good. So it, it made it through good. 
Uh, other than that, we have uh, you know, our monthly meetings there. We have various uh, events we participate in, Monsters on Main Street being probably the biggest event uh, that we just finished up uh, last month. Oh, that's cool. Um, who does most of the renovations? Well, it's all the volunteers. Um, we do have 300 plus members. It is a small group that are, are active and working on it. Um, when the station was saved back in 1981, it was uh, uh, a much bigger group because we were trying to save the station. Now at this point, the station has been saved, so it's a little tough for getting volunteers out there, just like it is in, in other volunteer groups uh, throughout the area. Uh, but we keep plugging away on it. Back um, about five, six years ago, we had teamed up with the Village of Brookfield on a, a grant application with the Illinois Department of Transportation. Uh, they gave us a grant for about $125,000 um, that put the slate roof back on and uh, uh, various copper trim and that on the building. Um, so other than that, we just we, we keep moving along on it and, uh, you know, takes time, but it's still here after, you know, 120 years. That certainly is amazing. How can the community learn more about the station? Uh, you can visit us at our website at brookfieldhistory.org. Um, we have our monthly meetings on the fourth Friday of each month at 7.30, uh, other than the month of uh, December. Um, those meetings can be you know, general meetings. Uh, we, we, we call it uh, a show and tell. Uh, every other month we would have a meeting on uh, programs, as I mentioned before. Um, those you can watch for in uh, the local newspapers or get on our uh, um, uh, mailing list for our newsletter that we send out quarterly. Uh, the address of the station is 8820 and a half Brookfield Avenue. The half coming from the uh, Village Hall is 8820 Brookfield Avenue and when it moved across the creek it was able to keep its same address <laughs> so we got the, get the 8820 and a half Brookfield Avenue. Um, and uh, during the summer months from May through September we are open the fourth Sunday of each month from 1 to 4 for tours of the museum. So anyone can stop by and go in the museum? And stop by and tour the upstairs, the downstairs. Um, you'll see everything from, from uh, a hose cart back to you know, the early 1900s that the fire department used to various pictures of the town from over the years. Um, there's uh, the, the donation list on the wall from when Samuel Gross pledged uh, over $10,000 to help build Gross School when it was being built. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting history of the town that's part of that, as well as the upstairs living quarters is very interesting. Up there um, is one of the state-of-the-art washing, uh, washer and dryer machines, <laughs> which is basically a tub that just revolves around and then there's uh, uh, rollers for the, the clothes to go through to, to dry them. Uh, that was state-of-the-art back then. So there's a lot of very interesting things uh, to come see and it's all part of you know, the history of Brookfield. History wasn't founded until 1893, so this station actually predates Brookfield. All right. Well, that was very interesting. Thank you for joining us, Kit. Thank you. We all learned a lot, I hope. My name is TJ Ketchmark. Thank you for joining us on People in Perspective. <laughs>